how is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. In today's tutorial, Nick's going to show you the new 3D features within After Effects. Nick, the floor is yours. G'day everyone, welcome back to the Olufemi channel. Look, we're just going to look at some of the new features that are in After Effects 2021. Uh, one of them we have already covered, which is the new Essential Graphics and Mogus template in this previous tutorial that you'll see here. But this one, um, we're going to have a look at a couple of new things here. And one of them is the, uh, the 3D engine, uh, the new 3D engine that's in After Effects now. But before we get started, guys, I want to tell you about our product called the Lyric Video Creator Kit. It is probably the most requested thing that I get asked to make all the time, which is lyric videos. And unfortunately, due to my busy schedule, I don't really have a lot of time. So I thought I might create a kit that actually helps you, the person watching this video, to be able to make your own lyric videos. How cool is that? We even have a 30 minute masterclass to help you get started. So what are you waiting for? Grab your copy today and start making your own lyric videos. So we've got the standard 3D engine here. I've got this comp with this girl dancing in this uh, 3D environment. Um, look, it's it's. I'll just kind of show you what it kind of looks like uh, when this gets going because uh, it is a heavy comp. I kind of deliberately made it quite a heavy comp because I wanted to really test out this new 3D feature. As you can see here, it's um, it's it's a pretty straightforward comp. There's a kind of just. What's kind of making this heavy is all the, the lighting, basically. It is a pretty straightforward comp, really, but there's a lot of like, a little bit of like geometry, a little bit of lighting going on here. Um, it's, it, but it's heavy. And as you can see here, it is really struggling to kind of really just update in a meaningful way for me to be able to look around and kind of make adjustments and stuff like that. So Adobe has actually put in this new feature where we've got this little button here, as you can see here in the latest version of Adobe After Effects, uh, which you can download, uh, called Draft 3D. And if we turn this on, I'll show you what happens. Let's go back to the regular view. So say for example, you've got this comp and you've watched it and look at this, man. I can't even, it's, it's actually gonna take me a while to preview this, but let's, let's try and preview it. Actually, let's even try and preview it at the low res because it's just, it's just taking a while to render. Um, let's even turn off the, depth of field. We'll turn off all the things that I think are just causing it a lot of a lot of grief. I have to turn off a lot of things to kind of even get to see what's going on here. Um, and I'm even, I'm pressing render right now to kind of see if I can get some updated frames here, but look, it is taking a long time. There's reflections to calculate, lighting to calculate, all this kind of stuff, plus a green screen. I guess I could turn the lights off to kind of see if I can get a better idea. And that's looking a bit better, but I had to turn everything off to kind of do it. And you have to wait for it to render to kind of see what's going on, right? So it doesn't look too bad. Now, an easier way to kind of do that though, and we'll keep everything back on, is to actually turn this button on here. So say I want to actually, now if you, I'll look, we can actually look at it straight away and it doesn't need to render anything. It actually just previews everything. And that's what's great about this new engine is that we can do quite fast previews without actually having to render a, a proper render, basically. So you can kind of see it's just playing back at normal speed. Now, let's say we want to change it. So we want to change this movement. So let's go into the camera uh, keyframes here and we'll get rid of everything. And let's say, all right, we want to start out a bit further, a bit wider. And look, look, it's a lot snappier than what it was before. Uh, I want to start at a higher angle. So, and maybe sort of more towards the center. Let's say we want to adjust the frames. Um, let's pick a higher angle to start from. Uh, maybe we'll just start from like here and we'll set a keyframe. And now we'll actually zoom in. And we've got a couple of tools here. So we've got the dolly towards cursor, dolly to cursor tool, and then dolly to uh, POI tool. Now, the difference between the three is that now we can actually target where we want to go. So if I want to actually dolly towards our character here, say towards their head, we can actually go towards their head instead of, um, you know, just sort of hoping for the best kind of thing. So this is kind of a, a much kind of a more accurate way to kind of get the, uh, the dolly to go forward in my, in my opinion, which is kind of nice. All right, so now we've got that. So you kind of see now we've got more of a, like a crane down kind of shot with our dancer here. So now that we've got that down, we can basically, you know, we can turn 
we can basically turn the 3D off, uh, the draft 3D off, and we can kind of kind of see what it looks like with uh, with all the bells and whistles. And there you go, you can kind of see it. Let's turn the uh, let's turn the depth of field back on, and it's pretty much as easy as that to basically get. You know, if you want, if you're kind of seeing these renders and you know it's just going to take a while for you to see anything, um, then it's probably kind of worth switching over to the draft 3D so you can kind of manipulate things in a way that you would like. As you can see here, my computer is struggling to get through these. Fairly, you know, it's a fairly rudimentary scene, but 3D, it, it's my, my computer doesn't handle this sort of 3D very well, like with lighting and shadows and a few other things so that's where it kind of chugs along a little bit so having this little 3d thing in here definitely makes a big difference again i'll just show you what the difference is like without it so look at i'll turn it back on and just say i want to try and muck around with things um it's just it just takes a while to update as you can see taking a long time to update but with Draft 3D, I can pretty much do this all in real time. And that's what this new engine is all about, is making sure you have the ability to um, iterate quickly and, um, you know, really kind of get, really explore your options without having to wait for things to catch up effectively. And so that's that's what's kind of great about this new engine, is that you'll be able to, in terms of your workflow, it, you'll be able to go to like a meaningful way of jumping backwards and forwards between uh, the, the sort of the, the render engine and the uh, full, you know, the proper render, the, the proper render that you have at the end. So you can actually just check your movement. And I check the movement basically in, in a better than wireframe, which is great. It still kind of keeps a lot of things. It doesn't have all the shadowing and stuff like that, but you do get these like, some of the compositing, some of the effects does come through. So that's kind of cool. Um, and it's fast. Like, that's what you want. You want it to be fast. You just want to be able to see, like, if your movement is looking any good. So you can kind of move on to the next scene. And then we turn the draft 3D off and it's, it's good. Another kind of cool feature, too, is that um, if you want, in this draft 3D as well, there is a floor plane, which kind of helps you with identifying where things are uh, in the space. So in this case... Um, I'll just turn off the, I'll just turn off the ground planes for a second so you can kind of see what's happening here. Oh, that's the sides. Where's the ground plane? I think it's this one. Yeah. So, as you can see here, um, that's the ground plane. It just sort of helps you kind of define where your objects are. And as you can see, in terms of this space, it really kind of helped me to kind of figure out, all right, well, where is the floor actually touching, um, and then as you kind of you kind of see where it's starting to clip through the floor so that's kind of a nice little feature um, that kind of helps you uh, determine like where things are in the space now i just want to help you understand too this is something that i kind of it took me a while to kind of figure out was um how do you define the floor plane and and i don't think you can at this stage but what's kind of nifty is that the floor plane is always going to be in the same spot. So let's have a look at that. Um, I'll just show, show you with a new composition. So let's make a new comp. We'll call it floor plane. All right. So basically, let's turn on the crosshairs. So the, the floor plane is essentially always going to be here. I'll just mark it up for you. The floor plane is always going to start there as a default, always in the middle of the, of the comp. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new camera. And we'll just call it whatever this camera is. And we'll just put in a new object because it actually needs to have a new object in there to be able to register, a 3D object for it to actually register the ground plane. So what you're going to notice here is that, yeah, objects will just default to the middle of the screen here. So watch what happens. When I actually turn off, I'll actually rotate the camera so you can kind of see the, the object. So here, here you can see the object right here, right? Um, let's just make it a bit smaller so it's just a bit easier to see what we're doing. So yeah, here's the object here. As you can see now, when we turn on the ground plane, you'll see what happens. So that pops up and what's great is we can kind of zoom in and see where things get intersected basically with the ground plane as well. So it's real easy to kind of see. All right. So that's where, you know, that's where it gets cut off. Um, I need to bring it up a bit so you can kind of see. Yep. And you now know that that is sitting on top of the ground plane. So once you know where that ground plane is, it's super easy to kind of start putting things around that ground plane. So for example, let's make this, oh, uh, yep. 
we'll make it 90 degrees. And as you can see here, it's kind of a lot easier to line things up with, um, you know, things in the 3D space. Because now with that ground plane, you've got a way to kind of anchor yourself um, with what's happening in the scene a lot better than it did before. Which was, you know, it definitely helps with kind of making things, making 3D objects or mapping things out in the space. So now you've got a grid line to be able to kind of help you increment things. You can kind of see accurately where things are going to be in order to kind of line up perfectly with what you're doing. And that's a massive help if you do 3D stuff. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped. That's pretty much the new stuff that's in uh, After Effects 2021. It's pretty great in some respects. I kind of really appreciate that they put this in here. Yeah, I, re I really appreciate this because this actually comes in handy. Um, it was it was confusing me for a little bit, but once you realize that the ground plane actually starts in the middle here, um, everything else makes sense. But it kind of didn't make sense the first time I did it. I thought you could actually set the ground plane, but in fact, in 3D space, the ground plane is actually set right in the middle of the screen here before you put a camera down. So the good thing about that is that every time you drop in a new object, so for example, if we do drop in, say for, for example, another, like just say we drop in another object um, and it is 3D, it'll automatically default to the very center of the composition itself, as you can see right there. So that's all you kind of need to know. And that's kind of nice because you know that things will just drop dead center. So when you press Alt Home, it actually brings things back to the center. So that's kind of an interesting feature as well is that, um, you know, if you want to bring things back to the point of origin, like just say, for example, you faff it up and you go, oh no, I've, I've kind of pushed this in the wrong direction. This is not where it's supposed to be. You can press Alt Home and it actually brings it back to the anchor position there, which is kind of nice. Um, and now you can see exactly where it is. Anyway, guys, I hope that's been helpful. It's really been interesting trying to play around with this. Um, it's a really... Doing more 3D and After Effects is always fascinating for me. I always see what I can get away with before I actually have to jump into 3D software itself. But, you know, it's always kind of fun to see, like, what what kind of stuff can you actually get away with uh, in After Effects. Uh, and I'm, I'm always sort of impressed that you can get away with certain renders in After Effects. Like, it's not a 3D program by any stretch of the imagination, but you can get away with some very, very nice composites in After Effects that look 3D. And that's what I'm always very impressed with. And guys, if you want to find out anything else that's happening with me, you can go to nickbenku underscore motion on Instagram. You can ask me questions. We can have a little chat. I will answer. Anyway, guys, I'm going to head back to Josh and I'll see you next time. Shout out to Nick, yet another incredible tutorial. Please make sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.